Hi, I'm going to show you a short clip um, that just shows the relationship between the midsole of a shoe, the heel counter, the heel bone within it, the Achilles tendon. Um, this is a young male client of mine running at 17 kilometers an hour. He's running in the um, Nike um, Zoom Vaporfly Next Percent uh, 2. And, uh, and I'm fascinated by the difference in that relationship. Um, I'll show you the video. I'd be interested in, in a bit of discussion and your thoughts around what you see and what I've done. Um, I've slowed the video down to 50, 25 and 10% of normal speed and put some graphics on there. Um, yeah, I'd be, and I'd be really interested to see as a matter of interest what your thoughts are uh, on this situation. So that, that's quite an interesting piece of video for somebody that at the moment isn't injured. And I think when we play, when we, when we put a, an athlete on a treadmill at full speed and you don't have the benefit of kinematics, um, it's hard to appreciate just how fast things change between initial contact, the loading phase and toe off. But also as well, the asymmetry between its side because um, you know why should why should athletes function perfectly symmetrical? It, it, it's kind of for me, it's not possible, because um, we are so asymmetrical and we are so imperfect that you 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 can't get perfect symmetry. Even when you've done rehab and you might have used orthoses, um, you, you can't get perfect symmetry. You can get enough symmetry, improve function, uh, strength, flexibility to eliminate a problem, but you can never get to perfect because um, we don't know what perfect is. We don't know what neutral is. Um, but what's interesting is when this, when this particular runner gets into loading, uh, the speed that the heel changes and the contrast between the midsole of the shoe the heel angle I've had to estimate in the heel counter, but I think I've done a reasonable job of that, but it is an estimation. And I, the, I followed the line of the Achilles tendon on his actual Achilles tendon when I was drawing the graphics, and I followed the line of the um, gastrosoleal complex, the triceps sure, um, from the actual shape of his uh, musculature. Um, and what's interesting is, when, when the, the, the foot hits the ground, things are relatively lined up. And when the foot leaves the ground, these structures are relatively lined up. But the piece in the middle seems to fall apart. But you don't just only see it with this shoe, and this isn't a dig at this shoe because I find these super shoes um, fascinating. And um, 
you know the, the 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 three major things that make up the shoe which is the you know the stack and the material that the stack is made of the big deep sole the the rocker and the carbon plate and i know evidence is out exactly how they function but what i'd consistently see with this type of shoe and and i wish when i was a young athlete 35 years ago these shoes were around they, were, they, they, they obviously they weren't we used to use big clumpy new balances and and uh, you know you'd rarely see a pair of brooks around um, but I think I think Pumas, Adidas and New Balance is what I used and you know there was, there was, there was no genres there was no advice but you just used to run in them and you know you you could do quite well like you know athletes used to do really well in, in fairly rudimentary shoes and then leap forward 35 years to these really complex scientifically designed with some of the world's leading experts behind the design of these shoes and lots of research behind shoes trying to get obviously trying to get the best shoes to for athletic performance yet they still don't function particularly well in certain departments despite decades of improvements in technology in some ways the shoes have gone backwards i i find sandy to play we seem to be rocking with literally, literally rocking, rocking and rolling with these shoes. It's the sagittal plane is really good. Always impressed with sagittal plane. And I think there's something to do with the way that these shoes have this built in rocker and the way they facilitate the sagittal plane movements coupled with the ability of the athletes. And that's very individualistic. Um, I think that's what's improving performance. One thing that I'm always disappointed in, and I don't know why they don't seem to be able to get this right. And I'm hoping that some of these, some of you guys can help me, is the frontal plane always lets the shoe down. And, and I see a lot of medial side of Achilles tears in this type of situation. And um, with any overuse injury, it's never simply one factor. There's, there can be one majority factor where a number of other factors interplay. Tons of things, obviously weight, training phase, um, adaptability, quantitative genetics, the psychosocial aspects, all interplaying the form is overuse injury. So you can't just blame one feature or you'd be really difficult for you to blame one feature. So it's always wise to bring in a cluster of things and deal with a cluster of things, but don't miss the one main factor, whether it be biomechanical or the, they're just in the wrong shoe or they're just going through a really heavy training phase and, and they've exceeded the viability of the tissues. But I just think in a situation like this, I'm going to ask you what you would do because um, you've got a good athlete, uninjured, but you see this rapid eversion of the heel in an asymmetrical motion between the ipsilateral um, close chain side and the contralateral side going through the swing phase, which obviously rapidly switches over um, so, so you know, what would you do? Would you change the shoe? Would you bring some orthosis intervention? What would you do to deal with this? This is an uninjured athlete. Um, would you leave them? It's not broken, so don't fix it. See, for me, as an athlete, I look at a situation like this, and I'd be very worried about the performance of this shoe, even at speed, in the frontal plane. I think it collapses too much. So what are we being responsible or irresponsible in saying, look, you're not injured, go off and carry on. Thank you for doing the video. Or would you say, look, I have some concerns over frontal plane, put it into layman's terms, and I'm going to give you more strength and conditioning of the gastrosoleal complex. I might bring in an orthotic. I'm interested and opening up the discussion and um, seeing what the practitioner community would do. So uh, thank you for watching.